Hello guys, it's Grumpy. Welcome back to another Feed the Beast tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to automate the industrial centrifuge. Uh, this video is not really about the industrial centrifuge, like how it works. I'll cover it a little bit and basically give you the gist of it, but this video is mostly about how to automate it. So let's briefly go over what it does. First of all, you give it low voltage. Um, once it has voltage, you put whatever you want to process right here. Now I'm processing bauxite dust right now. And you also need to give it empty cells for most of the recipe. So you put your empty cells here and you put your bauxite dust here. The thing starts spinning. You come back in a while, like 15, 20 minutes. Depends on the recipe. Uh, you come back after a while and you'll have byproducts. These byproducts will fill up these four slots right here. And so let me show you the four byproducts of this process. This is the bauxite dust recipe. So the four byproducts are going to be aluminum dust, titanium dust, hydrogen cells and compressed air cells and so if this wasn't automated I would have to put this bauxite dust in here and come back in a little while and I'd have to manually grab all four stacks there now these things are slow as Christmas that's fine I'm happy with that it gives you something doing the game centrifuges are slow as hell in real life too but anyway um, as you can see right there I have eight of them and so it would take me forever to load and unload all those machines. It, it gets kind of tedious. And so I have it automated. So I'm going to show you how to do that real quick. Now I'm not going to build this step by step like I did the ore processor. But I'm going to go over it in detail. So at the end of this video, you should know how to do this yourself. Okay, first of all, the industrial centrifuge, like I say, runs off low voltage. But it actually only consumes 5 EU per tick. So what I mean it runs off low voltage, uh, you can only hook a bat box up to it or a LV transformer or like a solar panel or windmill or anything like that. You don't want to hook anything big up like a hybrid solar panel or nuclear reactor. Those things will blow up. These things can only handle low voltage. So now for my setup right here, I actually have medium voltage coming up through the floor right here. This is 128 EU per tick and travels over all these LV transformers. The LV transformers um, convert the electricity into low voltage which is 32 EU per tick. Now if all this stuff's going over your head yeah, you might want to check out a couple of my tutorials on industrial crap power. I'll put uh, annotations, uh, links to those in, uh, just up the top. But anyway, uh, each transformer powers four centrifuges. So as you can see I'm using an output here and I'm using output here and each output powers two centrifuges. Now I could actually get away with using less transformers than this but I thought this looked cool so that's why I did it that way. These things are super cheap to make but anyway let's cover how to automate this. Now first of all we have three things. First of all we have this input here in the middle. This is where we feed our dust in. We have a second input here where we feed in empty cells and lastly we have an output the output is these four slots here. So if I want to access this uh, slot right here, I have to do it from the top of the machine. If I want to access this slot right here where the empty cells go, I have to access that from the bottom of the machine. And finally, I get all the outputs from the side of the machine. So as you can see, I have three sets of pipes going to each machine here. The top one is for the dust. The side one is for the output and the bottom one is for the empty cells. So let me show you how, to, how this all works now. First of all I have three chests. One, one chest for empty cells, one for the dust, and then finally one for the, for the byproduct. And by the way this bauxite dust one um, it's going to generate, let's come down here to the output chest, it's going to generate aluminum dust, titanium dust, hydrogen cells, and compressed air cells but they're automatically getting sucked out of the machines and fed into this chest. So let's come back down here and we'll go over how all three of these subsystems work. Okay, first of all we have our wooden pipe with three redstone engines so that's gonna uh, every time these engines stroke it's gonna pull out three atoms from the chest but they aren't pulling out continuously. I have an iron ore gate here. Now these things are made with the assembly table and if you don't know how to do that I have a tutorial on the assembly table but Basically, iron ore gates made in the assembly table. I could have gotten away with using a basic gate here. Uh, the reason I used an iron ore gate because I happen to have a lot of them um, laying around the house, so that's why I'm using those. 
But anyway, the way these things work is you program a condition here just by left clicking or right clicking to cycle through. So you set your condition here on the left and whenever this condition is met, it performs whatever actions on the right. So the condition on the left is the pipe is empty. If there's nothing on this pipe, it will emit a redstone signal. So basically if this pipe's empty, put out a redstone signal. Well, if this thing puts out a redstone signal, it pulses these three engines. So that's what you're seeing happen. And when this thing switches on, you'll see the three engines pulse. There, this thing's off, watch. There it's switched on, the engine's operated. So every time it detects there's nothing in the pipe, it pulses the engine. So what, that, what this is good for, the reason I'm doing it this way, um, it prevents lag because what happens is if you didn't have these, uh, this pop gate here, if you just kept all three of those engines on all the time, this whole pop network would get flooded with these empty cells. You'd have dozens of them flowing through there and just causes a bunch of unnecessary lag. So with this setup right here, um, I don't have that much flowing through there. But anyway, here's a wooden pipe. It's pulling stuff out of the chest, these empty cells. And these empty cells are going straight down. There's a gold pipe down there that accelerates them. And then it comes out right here. As you can see, the cell going by right now. And I have a series of diamond pipes. Now, there's a diamond pipe at the bottom of every machine. And I have it programmed to accept empty cells through the white slot. So if you look at the top is the white slot. And I have an empty cell in there. So the only thing that can go up inside the machine is an empty cell. And the reason I like to use diamond pipes is because it prevents jam. So if somebody just throws some random item in that chest, it won't jam up the machines. It'll just keep, it'll just circulate and go right back into the chest. So basically it works is when something comes down the line here, uh, it checks at each diamond pipe, it checks to see if it can go up there. And so if the machine is full, it'll just keep going on. So it checks the first machine, it's full. It goes on the second machine, it's full. It'll keep going until it finds an empty slot. At that point, it'll go up. If there are no empty slots, if all the machines are full, as you can see right back down there, let me come down here. It drops back down, comes back this way, and here's the return pipe. So we can actually watch this. Let's watch. There's one coming down right there. It'll make a U-turn and then it comes back because all the machines are full. Now, the instant one of these machines gets done with its process, um, it's going to consume a little more bauxite ore and it'll consume some more empty cells. At that point in time, there will be room and so it'll start filling the machine up. So in the meantime, you just get, get a few cells circulating in the system. So let's go over here and I'll show you the one for the bauxite dust. Same principle. We have another iron uh, ore gate. This one's set up with the exact same condition. If the pipe is empty, emit a redstone signal and that turns the engines on. So I actually have four engines right here. And so it's pu pulling four items uh, at a time out. Let me come over here. As you can see, the, the dust gets fed in from the top because once again, uh, you got to feed stuff in from the top, the bauxite dust or whatever you're processing goes in from the top to fill up this middle slot. And so I have another series of diamond pipes. At this time, if you look at the black pipe is the one that's connected to the machine. So I put my uh, bauxite dust in the black slot. So the only thing that can go inside the machines is, is uh, the bauxite dust. Anything else will travel all the way down the line. It won't go inside any machines. It'll come back up and then come back down the return pipe and go back into the chest here. So let me cover the final system. The final system is the is the output system. It actually recovers all the goods from the chest. Um, I'm sorry, recovers all the goods from the machines and puts it in the chest. So let me briefly go over how this works. We'll come on down here. And if you look right here, we have a wooden pipe connected to the centrifuge. Now this setup right here is just duplicated eight times. So if you understand one of them, you understand all of them. Uh, basically we have a wooden pipe here with an engine on top. The engine extracts the, raw, the byproducts from the um, machine. Now instead of placing redstone torches next to all the machines, I am using a iron ore gate I, once again. This time the condition is items in inventory. So if there's anything inside the inventory, emit a redstone signal. Now unfortunately here's a drawback to these gates. Um, they see anything inside this machine as inventory. So what I would like it to mean if I'm trying to stuck stuff if I was trying to suck stuff out of this chest, ideally what I would want 
You see these four empty slots? I'd want that to count as inventory, but it counts everything as inventory. So this counts as inventory, this counts as inventory. So even though the machine has no byproducts to output, the engine still has to go. But anyway, for an inter intermediate level video, this is a, a great way to do it. This thing works fine. So I just wanted to point that out. I can show you another example where it sucks, where it's totally worthless over here too. Um, Let's say you only want the redstone engine to switch on if, if there's something in this slot. Well, with that condition I'm using, which is if there's anything in inventory, uh, emit a redstone signal. Well, all these overclockers and transformer upgrades and energy storage, they count as inventory. So this thing uh, uh, has limited use. Basically, I'm using it just to uh, get away with not having to put a redstone torch next to the engine. But anyway... The wooden pipes uh, pull stuff out of the uh, centrifuge, comes up in here and goes up to this gold pipe, gets accelerated. Now at this point I have an alternating series of golden pipes and iron pipes. The golden pipes accelerate everything, so the instant stuff comes out it gets accelerated. Now what the iron pipes are doing, they're merging all eight centrifuges into one line. So let's say for example, let's go down to this one right here. Here we have an industrial centrifuge here. I'm pointing right at it. And we have another one right here. I'm pointing right at it. Well, this iron pipe merges the two outputs together. So the way this iron pipe works, let me come back down here where I can reach it better. Um, basically, you take a Billcraft wrench and you right click it with the, the black Billcraft wrench. And you get the condition you want. Well, the condition I want is where the clear side is to the left because I want everything to flow through the left. So the way this works, anything that enters this intersection, it can only leave through the clear path. These two closed ones, they can't leave that way. So every time something comes to the intersection, it kills this way. So um, all the outputs of the machines, they merge in this one pipe, they travel down here, and they go inside this chest. So basically that's it. It, it wasn't hard. It's was a little time consuming because you're just doing everything eight times and you have to program everything, but not too bad. But it's already made life a lot simpler because if I went down here and, and sh show this chest again, if you look at all that byproduct, that would have taken forever. And the way the, the centrifuge works, um, the way we used to do it before I automated this, is you just walk by the centrifuges every now and then. If they weren't spinning, um, you put something in there. But it might take you 30 minutes to notice something's not spinning in there. So... With this setup right here, all these eight of these machines are running continuously and they're just processing bauxite dust right now. I'll uh, later on automate this side and process something else. But anyway, I hope you found this uh, video helpful. If there's anything you're confused about, like how Buildcraft pipes work, I have to roll on that or on EU Power or anything, just check the series playlist because I have all kinds of tutorials on how to do all this stuff. Uh, this is just showing you this particular application, how to uh, automate industrial centrifuge but anyway if you enjoyed this video please give it a like it helps my channel but also too if a video gets a lot of likes lets me know to make more videos of that type one video has 10 likes another one has 100 i'm more likely to make more videos that get 100 likes than the ones that get 10 so if you enjoyed this video please give it a like as grumpy we will see you next time